Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, here giving you a tutorial with a head cold. I apologize for the sound of my voice, but I really wanted to show you what I got in my Smart Art kit this month. This is so much fun. It's like a present to your door every month. So Smart Art gives you everything you need to get going in a certain medium every month. And this month it was charcoal drawing. And you get this really cool mannequin, which is handy if you do comic book or manga art and you don't have a model to work from. It's really great for getting those gestural drawings. Plus, I think they look really cute displayed on a shelf charcoal sticks which we're going to use today so rather than go over those more now we'll kind of talk about them while we're using them and this cool um book and i love that it's spiral bound because i can flip the page all the way over and work flat on my desk and i've played with this already i've done a little landscape drawing i did this sheep um i did this I kind of was playing around with this truck design and i also filmed a tutorial for this moon i haven't uploaded it i wasn't sure if anybody would be interested in this so if you are and you'd like to see that tutorial just leave a comment below and I will upload that for you. Um, the paper has a rough surface and a smooth surface and it's up to you what you want to use. The front side is rough, the back side is smooth. I'm going to use the rough side because it will hold a little bit more pigment because of the tooth and the texture. And you also get an eraser shield which I'll show you how to use, um, a kneaded eraser, some blending stumps, a blending shimmy, and the sandpaper stump which is actually used for cleaning your blending stumps if you want to get back to the uh, to the white felted stump, or you can use it to sharpen your charcoal or pastels on, or even your pencil if you want to. And I really like this holder, although I just usually use my hands if I have a long stick of charcoal like this, but when they get short, or when your pencils get short, you could pop that right in this little pencil holder and slide up the collar, and then you can extend the life of all of your pencil supplies, and colored pencils get expensive, so this is a really handy thing to have. So without further ado, let's get into our tutorial. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see my paper a little bit closer. And, well, that's a little too close. There we go. And um, we're going to start by sketching with our medium size stick here of the willow charcoal. And I'm going to do a pomegranate and also one that's cut in half. And I'll put a link to the reference photo I used in the video description. I'm going to start by um, making kind of like a... a bumpy circle. You know pomegranates are not perfectly round so I don't I want to have the kind of that rough uh, circle and then I'm gonna have one that's sliced open here and I got my photo from Kaz the Lego I believe her name is pronounced from paint my photo and I'll put a link so you can go check her out and uh, print it off for yourself if you want or just look at your computer screen okay and then I've got that bottom part of the Pers um, I want to say persimmon. It's a pomegranate. It's like my one of my daughter's favorite fruits, and we can only get it like in the fall here in Maine. Um, that might be the same everywhere. I'm not sure. Let me get that little top of the pers the pomegranate there. All right, and our light is coming from over here. Okay, so our light source is coming this way. So we're gonna have shadows underneath on this side. So. It going to be right along the bottom and over here so we want to make sure that we get that right in right off the bat because sometimes if we wait and do our shadows later um, we realize that everything else in our picture is too light and we have our values wrong so I like to go ahead and get my shadows right off the bat and even though I have all these fancy tools I like to blend with my fingers most of the time <laughs> actually if I want a really dark uh, area I like to blend with my fingers because then I, I, I think the oils in your fingers kind of like lock it and press it into the paper a little bit more so you get a little bit darker of a shadow at least that's what I find now I'm also going to smear, smear some of that onto the skin of the fruit there and I'm going to do the same over here again with my finger because I want to make sure I lock that color down an optional thing you might want to have a couple optional things that aren't in the kit would be like a fixative and uh, that's probably because you can't really it's, it's really hard if you ever want to mail um, aerosol things. I know anytime I have to go to the post office to mail things, they always ask if you have aerosol containers in there. So I assume that's probably why that's not in the kit. And uh, just a plain old piece of white chalk is really handy too if you're doing charcoal stuff. And don't worry that you're losing some of your definition here. It does not matter. We're going to get it back. Okay, it's it's better to do that now before we put in too much, uh, too much work. Okay, and now I'm going to re-put in my lines. There, and the edge here. Remember, no perfect circles. Everything is kind of rough and bumpy and, and imperfect. And then I can leave my darkest shadows and just not blend them, okay? Just let them do their, just let them be dark right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this dark shadow inside the top of the, um, 
I don't know, is that where it attaches to the tree? Maybe I've never seen a uh, pomegranate tree, so maybe I think that's probably where it attaches to the tree. Let me know in the comments below if you know anything about pomegranates. I like to learn things. I like to know stuff. They don't grow around here, I don't think. I think they're more tropical, aren't they? Not much grows in Maine. <laughs> Not much for fruit, anyway. We get apples. Apples are good. No time to go apple picking, too. And I'm just kind of toning, adding um, adding some shadows. Got more shadow down here. We got to put in there. Now, a lot of people don't like to get their fingers dirty. So, what you do is, you now you can use either these felted stumps or you can use the rolled stumps, depending on what you prefer. I think if you want a little bit more detail, the rolled stumps are going to let you get into smaller places. And you're not going to absorb as much of the medium, and I think that the the the, uh, the felted stumps kind of pick up a little bit more and give you a softer look. So this is a softer, that's a harder blending tool, just like if you were using a paintbrush and you would want um, a softer brush versus a harder brush. So now I'm going to draw the segments where the little seeds are in this cut open pomegranate. It's almost like a little starburst shape. I'm not going to get too fussy with it. You don't need to. We'll, and then the rest of the, the pith area will stay white. I want to blend that out a little bit. I could actually probably use a shimmy to kind of blend that off into nothing. And I could clean up with my eraser if I felt like I needed to. Now with a kneaded eraser, you're, if you press and lift, you won't damage your paper and it will remove a lot of the stuff you don't want. And it's also really good for using through the eraser shield when you want to put a, a really sharp highlight on something. So there, I just went back in and I drew that a little bit, um, a little bit more finer. Okay, now I think I'm going to switch to the smaller, one of the smaller sticks. That one's super small. I want to get there, this one. And I'm going to start drawing the little lobes of the seeds. Go ahead and just draw ovals in here, really. I hope my voice isn't super annoying, guys. I just had to do some creating today. I spent all day yesterday binge watching Netflix and lying on the couch, and it was just, it was getting to me. I was feeling just way too lazy. I had to, I had to do something creative. Do you guys get that way when you're sick, or do, can you embrace it? I can't embrace it. I don't know why. I feel like oh, this, this just, I mean, maybe you can embrace it for like a couple hours, and then it's like, all right. I got to do something with my day. <laughs> and now I'm just going to go in and color some parts of these seeds. I still want to make sure I keep some of that round shape and then I'm going to go in with this smaller felted stump and kind of blend. And then another cool thing you can do because not only are you are you blending, you're also picking up some pigments. So you can actually draw with that pigment, really so get some really subtle shading. Because there is, you know, not, it's not all, you know, black and white. There are values here, different different shades. Now I want to lighten that up a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch my. Um, my kneaded eraser kind of to a flat area and I'm going to just kind of wiggle and lift it right around. Try to get that sharp edge back. And then I can go back and add just that rim where you'd have the darker red skin. And then add the shadow onto the other pomegranate so that it, it makes this one that's in front stand out a little bit more. Okay, and then I told you I'd show you how to use the eraser shield. Oh, I like putting that shadow in. I do like shadows. Do you like putting shadows in? I do remember our light's coming from there. It's going, it's going that way. It's going whoops, light. There we go. Um, all right, so, and I want to put, I did leave a bit of a highlight there, but I think I'll lift up a little bit more of a highlight. See, that's it. That's all you do. It's all starting to look nice and round, isn't it, guys? Okay, so now on our little berries, I want to put some little round highlights, little sparkles. The drawing's almost done. Can you believe it? We're doing so good. 
Um, so I'm going to use those little circles there, and I don't need to even see where exactly my um, my berries are. I just need to go in and put in a few sparkles. Just press over the eraser shield, and you'll get the little sparkles in there. It's not super. Um, it doesn't stand out super lot because we don't have just a solid color in there. It's just going to give us a little bit of a little bit of sparkle. And then I'm just going to look and maybe just kind of trace around the edges of some of the seeds to make them look a little bit more defined. We need contrast. We're just dealing and see, the thing is, with colors, you can cheat a little bit, you know? You can vary colors and not worry about values. That's why it's so important to learn how to draw, because once you learn about values, you're going to, it's everything is going to be a piece of cake, because you could paint, you know, yellow pomegranates or purple pomegranates or green pomegranates. As long as you have those values right, you're going to be able to tell what it is. When you have to rely just on color because you don't know your values, your artwork is weaker. Alright, blend that up a little bit. Now you can probably see that I've gotten a little messy here, so I'm going to clean that up with my eraser. Now to clean these erasers, you just you just stop, keep uh, stretching them and squishing them. So that's what they call a kneaded eraser, because you need it. You need it to clean it, and you need it to make it to the shape that you need. The eraser for all your needs, and I am just going to rub a little bit because I can... I'm just about done here. Oh yeah! That's looking nice. And so you could do these same techniques with colored pastels if you wanted to, but I would urge you to try doing some black and white sketching because it's really going to improve you as an artist. Now I want to get that little kind of ruffly edge up there at the top of the pomegranate. So I'm just going to wiggle my eraser up there and pull out that highlight. Now you could go in with some white chalk and add some more highlights if you wanted to, but I really don't think it needs that. I think we did a pretty good job of of uh, capturing all of those nuances with just the one color of charcoal in our various blending tools. So I hope you try it. Use what you have if you don't have the Smart Art Kit. And if you'd like to know more about Smart Art and perhaps sign up for a subscription yourself. There'll be links in the video description, so make sure you go check that out. I thank them for their support and bringing you these free tutorials, and um, until next time, happy crafting!